and of mathematics at uh, Chennai Vishwara Institute of Technology, Gubi. Uh, I'm here uh, because uh, VTU e Shikshana e-learning center has uh, asked us to sort of give a set of lectures on your uh, mathematics uh, one that is uh, uh, 18 mat 11 uh, baby mathematics undergraduate course. So I will uh, start with that and uh, I thank uh, e Shikshana Center, e Learning Center, for having given me this uh, opportunity to share a few of my thoughts on uh, uh, mathematics. And uh, I also thank our uh, management of our uh, General Special Institute of Technology for having provided uh, the infrastructure to carry out this set of lectures. Uh, without much ado, let me start with the mathematics. So we are here to learn uh, the first module of your uh, 18 mat 11, uh, which is called uh, differential calculus one. And uh, uh, the syllabus, of course, it's available on the internet. You can always check, uh, but just for sake of uh, completeness, I will uh, present it in front of you here. This is your syllabus review of elementary differential calculus, polar curves, angle between the radius vector and tangent, angle between two curves, the famous pedal equation only for polar curves. Uh, and then we will go on to learn curvature and radius of curvature, Cartesian and polar forms of this uh, radius of, uh, of curvature and radius cur of curvature, center and circle of curvature. All this we will learn without proof, many of these without proof. Some I'll try to give proof, even though it's not very important from examination point of view. We will also learn applications of all this to evolutes and involutes. Yeah, I know, I understand you. You're not understanding everything I'm saying. You're not supposed to, because this is what we are going to learn in our uh, course. So it's not, you're not expected to know all these words. I'm just telling you for the sake of completeness, for the sake of telling you what we are going to learn. That was syllabus and why are we teaching this? These are the objectives. You need to, as an engineer, you need to visualize curves in polar form. What it means, I'll tell you later. But at least right now I can tell you, at least I can tell this much, that as engineers, you need to understand what curves are. You should be able to visualize this. Curves means basically path of a particle. It may be moving because of various reasons. For example, I uh, launch a rocket and then rocket is moving. So it traces a curve. So you need to understand, you need to give equations for that if you want to control that. A satellite is going around Earth. I need to know its path, that's a curve. Or say maybe you designed a big machine and you want to know where a particular particle on the chain in that big machine is moving. So there are various reasons why I would like to know how a particle is moving. You may be in a chemical factory where you need to, so for example, soap factory, and you need to make soap. Of course, you don't make small soaps. So factories will make in large quantities. And you need to know how I combine various chemicals, what time, which chemical should be put so that everything doesn't solidify at one go. Uh, you need to understand path of a particle. So this is a very generic kind of need for engineers to understand how a curve is moving. I mean, what a curve is to visualize that. So this course will help you a little bit in that. We need to calculate angle between the radius and tangent vectors of any curve. In particular, here we'll teach you about polar curves. Uh, and then we need to calculate angle between two curves. How, when two curves meet each other, at what angle are they meeting? What does it mean? All these things we'll try to explain. Uh, and then we will learn famous pedal equation, very beautiful equation, uh, very relevant. Center of curvature and radius of curvature. Uh, you know, you have civil engineers, you need to make uh, roads. So especially on the hill, hill terrain, if you're making road, you need to know how much to curve. You know, the cur roads are bending and twisting. So you need to know how much it should twist how much it should turn, how much it should bank. Means roads are not always flat. Sometimes they are uh, sloping. So how do I figure out all these things? For all that, you need to understand very well curves. Uh, and we will also construct new curves from given curves in the form of evolutes and involutes. What are evolutes and involutes? I'll tell you during the course, no problem. 
uh, applications yeah i already mentioned a few applications here are some more i'll explain these more after i talk to you what is evolutes and involutes so how do i do uh, for example how do i design teeth of a gear means we all have seen even cycle gear you must have seen so there are teeth on that cycle gear i want to design what should be the shape of that to be very efficient so and also uh, you must have heard about uh, fuel elements getting into nuclear uh, reactors now what shape should those those fuels be means fuel rod should be all these kind of things are uh, studied and you know you need to understand geometry very well that is what the purpose of this course is uh, i won't start straight away with our uh, what is there in the syllabus i would like to give you a historical backdrop of why we are studying this or even better what all have you studied till now in mathematics let's try to not everything but at least what is relevant from our course i will try to give a brief recap of it a uh, very first day in your school in mathematics you learned numbers numbers 1 2 3 whatever gradually you learn negative numbers and then you learn decimals or maybe decimals were earlier fractions all these numbers you studied uh what did you do with numbers once you understood what those numbers were in fact you soon understood it's not numbers which are important it's playing around with numbers was more important what do you mean by playing around with numbers that's the first thing you did for example this is a game this is a playing around with numbers 2 plus 3 is 5 you had understood what is 3 what is 2 what is 5 and then you started playing with it 2 plus 3 is 5 that's an addition and for addition you need two numbers and you get a new number because of this means you add them you get a new number similarly you could subtract you could multiply you could divide of course division was a bit uh, subtle you could divide by 0 but addition multiplication subtraction you could do with any numbers so not just these are what you see here right now on your screen are examples of integers integer addition integer subtraction multiplication division in fact it need not be only uh, integers you could have all sorts of numbers for example moment you learned division 2 by 3 the answer was no more an integer you had to learn something known as fraction you had to learn something known as decimals so we could play around with these numbers also 2.5 minus 3.4 whatever the 3.5 minus 2.4 uh, fraction addition and you also learn fractions are same as decimals it's just another form of it all these kind of playing around with numbers was what was essentially part of your middle school mathematics by the time you were uh, your mind or your you were equipped to deal with this you had finished your class 5 or 6 then came the next first big step in mathematics i don't know what big but yeah this is the first non trivial step where you took uh, to in the learning of mathematics the next kind of questions you were asked was like this what should be added to 3 to make it 5 it means i have 3 oranges i want 5 oranges what should i do it means what should i do to it so even more specifically what should i add of course the answer is very simple but the technique of getting the answer was an important thing you had to frame this kind of equation i had something what i had i don't know i'll call it x and then if i add 3 to it the answer was 5 so you made this kind of equation we called it simple equation x plus 3 equal to 5 and you try to solve it and you ended up with uh, what is known as algebraic equation to make you understand algebraic equation one had to teach you algebraic expressions how to add subtract and things like that that time it was these were x plus 3 was just an expression but soon you realized by the time you came to your class 11 or so these are not just an expression but this is actually a function x plus 3 forget about 5 there is nothing special about asking this question what should be added to 3 to make it 5 i could ask the same question or similar question what should be added to 3 to make it 10 what should be added to 3 to make it 30 what should be added to 3 to make it 5 that was one question i mean these are all one set of questions one family of questions what should be added to 3 to make it something else what should, so for everything the answer was something whatever is this something minus 3 that was the answer you learned that as you are solving simple equations simple linear equations uh, so soon you realize these expressions are important these expressions themselves are what are known as function here is an example x plus 3 is a function 
this is the transition you have to make from school to college and at university level you have to make this transition even in a more concrete way which is why i'm spending trying to spend time with you on making you understand functions function is basically relationship between variables i know this is a very textbook kind of definition i don't know what does it mean let me give a very real life example for example you buy tomato every day you keep buying 1 kg of tomato don't ask me why every day you buy 1 kg of tomato and you find out every time of course you buy you have to find out what is the rate of tomato that means per kg how much tomato sorry per kg of tomato how much money i have to pay tomato rate rate means how much per kg how much money per kg i have to pay that's what you find out so every day you keep keep track of this one day it is 5 rupees next day it is 4 rupees next day it is 10 rupees maybe bad days it will be 20 rupees bad days for you buyer and the good days for you it may be come down to 3 rupees also 2 rupees also who knows basically it's a variable it is changing what is changing the rate is changing depending on the day so day is the independent variable rate is the dependent variable that means day you have no control it keeps change so today is monday tomorrow is tuesday next day is thursday etc etc or whatever uh, 21st january 22nd january 23rd january it continues to go 21st january what was the rate 22nd january what was the rate 23rd january what was the rate 24th january what was the rate like that for every day i'll maintain a record of rate so if i combine or if i look at all the rates together that gives me a function each rate is a number rate means uh, uh, cost of tomato per kg that's a number and i associate this number with different days so for every day i get different number this is a so if it is a nicely expressible say for example i mean it's very funny it may be january 1st it is 1 rupee per kg january 2nd it is 2 rupees per kg january 3rd it is 3 rupees per kg 4th it is 4 rupees per kg it's a very nice relationship in real life you don't have such nice relationship every day of the week whatever i mean every date first it is 1 rupee per kg 5th it is 5 rupees per kg 20th it is 20 rupees per kg like this if you make it's a very nice relationship january 31st you know it is going to be 31 rupees per kg february 1st again it will come down to 1 rupee it doesn't happen like that but this is an example of a function of course this is not a, I mean, it's a stupid kind of function but uh, it is still a function function means basically relationship between variables in the example i gave you one variable was the day day of the date of the day another was the rate of tomatoes so let me give more examples of this uh yeah the usual i mean I, i just gave you one real life example rate of tomato rate of gold rate of uh, something else or uh, how much time did i get sun in one uh, 24 hours or uh, when what time did the moon rise on every day every evening or whatever given one 24 hours like this you can construct different kinds of functions but these functions i can do mathematically i can deal with these functions only when you give me an expression for these functions so many times uh, if you give me expression i'll be able to play around with it so if you give me nice enough expressions i'll be able to play with it nicely what do you mean by nice expressions that's what i want to tell that's what i want to explain so for example what i gave you as an example rate of tomato first day 1 rupee second day 2 rupees third day 3 rupees it's a very nice function because if you tell me the day of the date of the day i can tell you what is the rate of the tomato it's a funny kind of thing it's not real life thing but it is a function so there the uh, the easiest functions are what is known as polynomial functions uh, polynomial functions are typically they look like this i will not give you perfect definition but we understand this is a quadratic function for example x square minus 2x plus 10 so there is x power x is the independent variable it's like the day of the month or whatever so uh, uh, x power something plus or minus something into x plus some constant here in this particular case x square minus 2x plus 10 i can give different polynomials here x cube minus 3x or just x square plus 2 x power 100 minus 99x 
plus 75, whatever. These are all examples of polynomials. In general, they look a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus etc. a n x power n. I will not bother about such things, but we understand what polynomials means. Basically, x power something and their sums. This is also x power something, x power 1. 2x means 2 into x power 1. Similarly, this is 10 into x power 0 x power 0 is 1. So 10 is to be thought of as 10 into x power 0. So these are all sums of powers of x. Uh, some means it may have negative coefficient also. This is called a polynomial. So I will not uh, split here too much, but we understand what polynomial means. It's roughly this is a function which looks like this is called a polynomial function. And then this is, uh, of course, this polynomial function, you had met this guy in your high school. You had known, for example, 2x plus 3 equal to 5. You know how to solve it. x square minus 2x plus 10 equal to 0. You know how to solve this quadratic equation where you knew how to solve. Similar, these are all polynomial. Uh, cubic, some special cubics you could solve. Some special quartics quart you could solve. Cubic means degree 3 equation. Uh, quartic means degree 4 equation. Some of these you could do. Not all. Uh, so one would... One would want to understand a bit more about what polynomials are. I will spend time on this soon. Next kind of function you learned probably in late class 10 or early class 11 when you first came to PUC was so-called trigonometric functions. Sin x, cos 10x, secant x, whatever. There were several trigonometric, six trigonometric functions which you learned. So that's increased your armory of functions. In fact, till class 10, you knew nothing other than polynomials. In fact, you knew nothing other than linear and quadratic. Cubic also not much. Then you also came and you learned a bit more of differentiation. You learned this exponential function. Exponential function means basically the independent variable is an exponent. Here, independent variable is a base. Exponents are all constants. Here, exponent itself, exponent means what is up here. These are variables, e power x or 3 e to the power of minus 5x plus 7, whatever. These kind of exp uh, expressions are called exponential functions. And then you also learned how to combine them, how to add, subtract these. So, for example, you know how to add sin x and x squared. x squared plus sin x is a valid function. So, you know how to add them. So you know how to subtract them. Similar to what you did for numbers. You learned numbers, you added, subtracted. Similarly here, you have learned to add and subtract functions, multiply functions. For example, x square. Uh, for example, here, uh, I can write e power x into 3 e to the power of something else, sin x, or e 3 e to the power of 5x, whatever. I can multiply basically two functions. Similarly, I could divide also. These are all things we learn to play with. This is what is meant by saying playing with functions. And uh, so this is what addition of functions we did. X square minus 3 plus sine x is basically x square minus 3 plus sine x. It's just straight away as it is. In fact, polynomial addition you must have learned. For example, here, if I had x square minus x square plus 3, then x square minus 3 plus x square plus 3 would have been x square plus x square 2 x square minus 3 plus plus 3 0. So it would have been 2 x square. So uh, what I'm trying to say is we know understand addition of polynomials, addition of uh, even subtraction we know. So here is an example e power x plus 1 minus 3 x square minus 1. How do I add this? e power x, I'll write it as it is, plus 1 plus 1. Oh, here is a mistake, I think. This should have been plus 1. Uh, I made a mistake here. It's okay. I will change this later. Uh, this is e power x plus 1 minus 3x square minus 1. So minus minus will become plus and it should have been, so answer would have been e power x minus 3x square plus 2. I made a mistake here. That's okay. Doesn't matter. The idea is that you know how to add functions. And uh, then multiplication of functions also you knew. Cos x into x minus 3 e power x, you know how to multiply. Cos x into x and cos x into minus 3x. This is what you will get. Similarly, division. Division, again, you have to be careful that de denominator is not 0. So uh, division is always a bit of a subtle operation. In all these cases, in this case, like how when you when you are given numbers, 
when you learn numbers given two numbers you could add subtract similarly here given two functions you are learning to add sub you have learned to add subtract multiply divide all these things so basically given functions are combined to give you a new function this is the art this is the next new concept you have to get used to this kind of terminology given one function given another function i'll add them up and give you a new function this is the terminology uh and this was all algebra I meaning you know i don't know still i can't understand you know i can't see what is this x square minus 3 plus sin x i can't see it but i can do it uh i can do the addition seeing part came with the geometry so let me let me tell you let me show you what does this geometry mean how do i incorporate geometry into addition and even definition of functions and things like that so let's try to understand geometry of functions basically geometry of functions means i should know how to plot curves geometry of so let us see for example let me give you a very easy thing uh, i use this uh, free open software called geogebra which is what i use for plotting all graphs and things like that it's a very useful thing very nice thing you will learn and you will enjoy lot of plotting lot of these graphs you please i highly recommend all students to download geogebra on their laptops if you don't have laptop and if you are using only mobile phone then a nice app is called desmos d e s m o s you please download this it's a graphing calculator it does more or less not more or less it does several things which we want to use for this course in geogebra same thing you can do it using desmos on your mobile phone so uh, since here i am using laptop i will use geogebra i very highly recommend you play around with the software called geogebra it's free you don't need any uh, money extra money to download this just the data for downloading that's all so let me show you some function i i will not teach you how to use geogebra too much but you can learn it on your own or when you see the illustration in this lecture set of lectures you will be able to understand so for example this is the geometry part where i have x axis and a y axis you know you are aware of all these things before so i will not spend too much time on this this is the plane x y plane this is the x axis and this is the y axis and here is say i want to plot a function for example simplest function is y equal to x square this is the probably the first function which everybody sees y equal to x square looks like this looks like this means what for example let us check on the grid also so that means at x equal to 0 y value is 0 that means this is the x axis i told you already the horizontal thing is x axis the vertical thing vertical line is the y axis that means values of x vary on this values of y vary on this and for example if i put x equal to 1 in this y equal to x square i'll get y equal to 1 if you put x equal to 1 in this you will get y equal to 1 that means if i take x equal to 1 at that point value of y is 1 so that means i'll make a point 1 comma 1 i will mark point 1 comma 1 this is a point a 1 comma 1 how did i get this if i put x equal to 1 i get y value also 1 similarly if i put x equal to 2 i'll get y equal to 4 you can see that if i put don't see the picture now see where the cursor is if i put value x equal to 2 y value will be 4 so then if i put value x equal to 2 y value is 4 so i'll plot point 2 comma 4 2 comma 4 on this plane is 2 comma 4 is point b like this i have to plot points various points on uh, in the plane that means i will take different values for x i i don't have to take only integers i could even take points like 1.5 and uh, well, if i take x equal to 1.5 clearly y is 1.5 square which is 2.25 you can see that it is here see you can see here x uh, uh, of course now i I mean, I have not moved it exactly on 1.5, but you can see if I make it 1.5, uh, the co y coordinate will be 2.25. You can see that, correct? See here. If I move, that means the x coordinate is 1.5, y coordinate is 2.25. 
So GeoGebra will do all these things. You can very nicely move the coordinates. That means you see, you can see, uh, keep seeing the algebra part. Point C, you keep seeing. This is the x coordinate of C. This is the y coordinate. That means if you substitute this value for x, this is the value of y you will get. So as I move this, you can see the point, uh, x and y coordinates are changing. This is what I meant by saying relationship between two variables. Here x and y are two variables. How are they changing? They are changing based on this relationship. This relationship expresses how x and y are changing with respect to each other. That means as you change x, what will be the y? Jo that is algebraic expression. This is the geometric expression. It will tell me you, your point will always be on the curve. Of course, x can be negative also, as you can see. Uh, in this case, y cannot be negative because y is x squared. But doesn't mean y can never be negative. We'll, I'll give you examples where I mean, I'm sure you have seen examples where y has become negative. So this is this part you must have learned in your coordinate geometry, uh, how to plot graphs of various functions. So this is a function algebraically. Of course, geometrically, it's, this is also a function. But geometrically means I have to see this curve. See this curve means I have to plot a table of values of this for various values of x what is the value of y? You must have done such things for straight lines. But now you have to do it for any function. Means you need not. Previously you had, for example, if you, you might have had y equal to x. y equal to x is a straight line. Uh, wait, I'll show you that. One minute. Uh, how do I edit this? <clears throat> This is y equal to x. y equal to x means, see I have written here, y equal to x now. y equal to x means, you give me a value of x, at x equal to 2, what is the value of y? It is 2. At x equal to 3, y equal to 3. At x equal to 5, y is equal to 5. Because y equal to x. Whatever is the value of x, same as the value of y. x equal to minus 4, y is equal to minus 4. So there you get. Uh, I'll show you the point. You see x equal to 4, y equal to minus 4. Here you get that. So GeoGebra is very useful in understanding all these things. You can, you know, uh, the most powerful thing about GeoGebra is you can move this. In your usual drawings, you can't move a point. You have to every time plot a new point. Here, you see, I can move the point. That means it's telling me, for example, A here. Now, coordinates of A, x coordinate of A is minus 1.98 x y coordinate of y is also minus 1.98 you can keep moving this so you can see in fact i'll show you uh, this is what i needed to show you i will uh, sorry 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 just one minute let me remove all a b c and show you mm, uh, I, I want to show you something you just see this sorry show label show trace is what i want to show and show, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One minute. I don't know why it's not showing. Show. Why is it not going? I want it to go and delete this. One minute. I don't know. I might have made some mistake. No. Why is this line not going? Ah, this line is gone now. So one, one, just give me one minute. I will try to show you this. This is uh, show object, but I don't. I want to see the trace of it. So now pick a point. Just one minute. Give me one minute. I'll show you because I'm used to drawing these things on the blackboard. Suddenly, because of pandemic, I have to show you everything on. Uh, uh, why is this? I want this line to get deleted. I don't want to delete it, but I don't want it to be showing this line. I don't know how. Uh, maybe I'll think about it, how to do it. What I want to show you is, you see, when I move this object A, Ah, now it's gone. Correct. This is what I wanted. When I move this object A, I have made sure that this object A will move on that line. So 
you see it won't go anywhere else what i want you to see is relation between x and y is being shown here here y is equal to x that means there is not i mean whatever x is value of y is also same so when i move this you see you are getting different x's and different y's you're not seeing the curve if you want to see the geometry you have to see the curve show trace i'm showing but why is it not showing and it is showing the whole uh, curve it is showing I, i'll try to show you sometime uh, later in the next part of whenever uh, how to show the tray i what i want to show is i want you to collect all locus of all the uh, points when i vary x to different values this is what a function is maybe i have an example somewhere else i'll just try to see that uh give me one minute let me see i must have written something here yeah here it is uh, uh, this is what i wanted to show you you see uh i'll pick a point p here don't see this math uh, algebra window right now uh in fact i'll close it as much as possible okay here is uh no i can't close everything because i need to see some things so uh, yeah uh, this yeah this much i see this is a point p in my xy coordinate xy plane in cartesian plane and i want what i want is i want to show you how x coordinate of p and y coordinate of p are related you see this is the x coordinate of p what you see in the picture uh, is x coordinate of p if this is the origin this is the x coordinate of p i think it's better to keep the axis this is the origin this is the x coordinate you see if i move point p the x coordinate is changing here x coordinate of p is 5 here x coordinate of p is 3 here x coordinate of p is 2 here x coordinate of p is minus 4 you can see i'm sure you understand this uh and correspondingly i want to show you what is the y coordinate in something i i won't tell you right now how the relationship is but as x is as i move the point along this line along this path then you will see how x and y coordinates are changing at this point x coordinate is 3 and y coordinate is some 2 point something something at this point x coordinate is 4 and y coordinate is also 4 at this point x coordinate is 2 and y coordinate is 1 at this point x coordinate is uh, something 5 and y coordinate is 6 you can see that at least if not exact slightly less at 5 it is slightly more than 6 like they are here also when x coordinate is minus 3 y coordinate is 2 point something so what i am trying to tell you is where as this point moves x and y coordinates are changing for example if this is day of the week and this is the rate of tomato then you can see for different days what is the rate of the tomato that is what is being plotted for this i want to consider the trace of this uh so that let me check that if it works no it doesn't work sorry so what i had done was i had taken this curve and plotted this what it means is when if i collect all the points which satisfy this relation x square by 4 is what i had plotted if you collect all these points i get a curve this is representation of the function y equal to x square by 4 y equal to x square by 4 this is the relation but this relation was not apparent when you if you don't see the curve when you just see this relation y equal to x square plus 4 or if you don't see the if you don't see the curve but if you see only points moving it is difficult to see the relationship means of course you can make out that as x increases y is also increasing as x becomes more and more negative y is becoming more positive such things you can see but if you want to get a real understanding of real understanding of it you need to understand you need to plot this curve curve means basically all locus of all points 
such which satisfy this relation so what i'm trying to emphasize is whether i write algebraically like this or geometrically this curve both are same this is geometric version of this algebraic expression that's what i want to tell and i also want to show you which are the easy function these are like you know this parabola is you learned it in your class 12 class 11 12 whenever conic sections uh, there are many other easy uh, functions i want to show you some of those functions so one of the easiest function as i already told you was y equal to x y equal to x is a line straight line passing through origin this is something which we all know this means as uh, value of y is same as value of x next uh, i mean this as a function i already explained to you as x value is 4 y value is also 4 x value is minus 3 y value is also minus 3 so you remember this you go from x means on the x axis so x equal to 4 you draw a perpendicular to x axis wherever it intersects my curve you take the y coordinate of that that is the value of y at this value of x so this is what drawing a curve means y equal to x similarly i'll next i'll show you y equal to x square x square this is the curve you see it's a parabola uh, what i want to emphasize is that uh, this curves you see by looking at uh, these curves i can say so much about how these functions are behaving for example between 0 and 1 between 0 and 1 means x between 0 and 1 this is the x axis so if x equal to 0 0.5 i can see y equal to x square curve is below y equal to x that means x square is less than x when x is less than 1 i can conclude that from this figure if i have x x value between 0 and 1 in as in this case you can see this curve this g curve g is y equal to x square as you can see and this curve f is y equal to x you can see y equal to x is above y equal to x square between 0 and 1 and at 1 both of them become equal that is true at x equal to 1 both these values are same x greater than 1 then x square will become bigger than x all that you can see in geometrically in this uh, plane that is what i want to emphasize so we will uh, see more of these functions examples of functions in the next class uh, i'll give short not full one hour lectures but short uh, shorter time uh, lectures today i will stop here but we will deal with more of these kind of functions in next uh, talks uh, thank you for your listening Uh, I'll stop here for today. Uh, again, we will maybe we will continue next time.